Luisa, excuse. Ah, okay. Now it's on like. Uh, Can you hear me? Okay. Yeah, Eloisa. So, Eloisa. Okay, Beatrice. Eloisa, excuse me now because I told with Anders that there is a problem on uh, the yes. recording. Yes. Okay. okay, we know, we know. Thank you very much. So, uh, so how I was saying, oh, okay. I'm saying that I'm so happy for having uh, this presentation today. We, your fame precedes you, so we, it's an honor for having you, uh, a new member in our group. And so you could uh, explain and talk about your beautiful work. We are anxious to know that. And uh, maybe some others come joining us today. So, because there was much more people saying that would like to be here to attend it. Anyway, the session is going to be recorded and then others can achieve, reach out to you. Okay? So, please welcome to our group and let's start it. Okay? Okay. Uh, thank you very thank much you. for introducing me to your group and I know someone from you because we meet in Boston on Scratch conference two years ago and I hope to visit uh, this year's Scratch conference in Boston and MIT too. And my name is Pavel Fralov. I'm speaking now from Russia and uh, I would like to make presentation uh, about uh, Robo project. Robo is free and open source uh, educational robotics. So let me try to show my screen. Now you should uh, see my screen and I would like to show you the presentation. I hope that everything is working good now. Uh, do you see the presentation? Yes, that's okay. Oh, okay. So we um, offer everybody to develop the imagination, to quote your imagination. And uh, if you um, use the word education in Russia, uh, it will uh, sound like образование. And the first uh, letters in the word образование, образ, uh, means image. So we strongly believe that good education should address the imagination of student. And if uh, people use the imagination good, they can imagine something and then they can do uh, this in the real world. Uh, it means that they educated good. So uh, we are working on education. Uh, uh, we are uh, working mostly on educational robotics. And now we see a very large market gap because uh, most of um, educational programs are using proprietary software and proprietary devices. So children are not able to modify devices uh, themselves. And as a result, they become users, but not innovators. And Robo and Robo Clubs Network bring new creative and gadget way to learn the basics of programming and technology using free and open source educational robotics. And we use both uh, free and open source software and free and open source hardware. So we are seeking for partners uh, to teach children from the age of seven and maybe even age of five. And we also working on um, using this technology to uh, start uh, a new successful business. Uh, so this is happy children from the Finland uh, who are using uh, robot technology. And we uh, will be happy when every um, child in the world will use our technology. So they will work hard to do this. So uh, Robo is an educational set for creating smart devices. Uh, our major devices uh, name are RoboKit and RoboLab. 
and they don't require any pre or programming knowledge. And they programming in an open source visual programming language using MIT Scratch. We call it Robo Scratch, and we have um, built uh, this software for standalone applications for Windows, Mac OS, Linux, and Android devices. And also, we are using network of Robo Club, uh, where we use our hardware, software, and curriculum to teach kids. Uh, creative coding, uh, microelectronics and schematics, mobile robotics, uh, Internet of Things and Smart House, and uh, basics of uh, 3D designing and 3D prototyping. So this is the image of our measure device, it's RoboKit. So I heard uh, that uh, many of you are using Arduino in your educational work, and in fact, this is a kind of Arduino on the wheels. So it uses uh, the fully compatible Arduino microcontroller, and it uses magnetic mount sensors. So you can uh, very easily uh, use this on the lessons, and you can mix and combine different sensors uh, and uh, replicate any technology that surrounds uh, your students from smartphone to refrigerator. And uh, I would like to tell you our history so you will better understand uh, why we mm, develop in uh, this way. Uh, we were the guys who bring Arduino to Russia. It was 10 years ago. And we bring Arduino to schools and invite teachers to use Arduino in schools. But teachers uh, was refused to do that. And they say that it's almost impossible to use Arduino uh, in the lessons. Uh, they can use it only in small clubs where not uh, more than uh, eight students can uh, be in one time uh, because it's very hard to control the educational process because Arduino should have a lot of wires, sensors, uh, breadboards, and so on. So teachers ask us to uh, simplify this uh, solution, so we uh, redesign Arduino to make uh, our two um, products. And also, we were the guys who was involved in first uh, steps of bringing uh, MIT Scratch to Russia. It was also about 10 years ago, and we do it with Intel company, and we do first Russian uh, uh, competition uh, on Scratch, and we're still holding competition on creative coding, and we're thinking to make this uh, competition worldwide sometimes, maybe uh, next year. So, uh, as we had Arduino, as we have Scratch, we use this technology and uh, we get uh, Robo. Uh, our um, uh, second product uh, is basically um, the implementation of uh, scratch board, or it also can uh, be known as Pico board. So this is uh, fully compatible with Arduino board, and also it has uh, buttons, slider, sound sensor, light sensor, some LED, uh, sound speaker, and uh, it's uh, compatible with all um, Scratch environment as Pico board. Uh, so uh, it's very good uh, system to bring kids to the um, uh, basics of the world of technology, to tell them the basics of Internet of Things, uh, Smart House, and uh, all our devices are compatible not only with MIT Scratch, but also with Arduino, so you can use uh, Arduino IDE to program these devices. So we have very easy to use uh, solution, uh, and we support teachers and motivate students to go to coding education, and we are developing in some countries where coding is just uh, um, uh, entered the school curriculum, 
and it's kind of uh, Finland or Thailand or some other countries, and uh, it's very easy to use uh, robo, robo robotic platform uh, as educational tools for children to learn the basics of technology, engineering, and coding. And we especially design our solution for mass adoption for schools, for lessons, and for clubs. And we don't require prior knowledge from the teacher. And this is very important uh, that any teacher can use our technology to teach kids coding. So it's ready to use, and we have complete advanced task within 10 or 15 minutes. And uh, our products are designed and manufactured in Finland. And we developed our product in cooperation with Helsinki University and Department of Teacher Education and Finnish Secondary Schools from Innocus Network. And all our products have CE certification. Uh, so um, our team uh, is uh, gathered by uh, international professionals and creative people who work in the area of free and open source like Linux software and Arduino hardware and so on for education since 2000. So it's more than uh, 17 years. And Robo is winner of Google Rice Award of 2013 and 2014. And we get an annual grants program from Google and uh, educational coaching, how to use our uh, solution for education in the best manner. Also, uh, we uh, are the winner of uh, contest of Finnish government. Uh, it's named uh, Finlanding. And Finnish government invites Robo to Finland to use our solutions in Finnish schools and uh, to scale our um, project to other countries. And now we have two offices. One office is in Russia and another office in, in Finland. So we have uh, more than 100 educational institutions worldwide, uh, which use in Roba, it's schools so, and universities. It's uh, 42 in Finland, it's uh, uh, 35 in Russia, it's two in Great Britain, five in Thailand, one in Spain. And also, we built our own network of robot clubs where we use our own curriculum, hardware and software to teach kids, and we charge money for that to make a stable project which can scale very uh, fast and in very stable way. Uh, so we have now about um, 40 op open robot clubs. Uh, in different countries and last year we just opened one robot club in China and we're going uh, to scale this uh, all over the world. Uh, so we see now that uh, educational market and market of educational robotics is growing very fast. We see high demand of in learning skills for the future like programming and digital literacy and um, we see that uh, uh, this process is constantly scaling up and uh, we invite uh, small companies to enter business of uh, kids' education, of uh, te technologies and skills of the future. So we have franchising offer. We are seeking for partners who can use our brand and uh, we give them uh, all information how to make uh, Robo Club and how to make this Robo Club profitable to guarantee that teachers will get a good salary and kids will get a good quality of education. Uh, to open one Robo Club, uh, the person needs to invest about uh, 15,000 euro for all. Uh, and um, uh, as the partners, uh, they get uh, everything uh, to start successful business. So it's Robo Products, it's guide to conduct business uh, in it's, uh, our brand book. It's quality assurance of education, it's pedagogical guide, on-site training and systematic assessment of teacher with certification. Uh, we support our partners during every step. We give technical support and advisory services and we give several channels of income. So it 
can be programming and robotic clubs, and can be holiday camps, and it can be some workshops. Uh, and uh, we um, consult our partners as the part of the robot family, and we give uh, the best condition for growth. And we expect that partners will follow quality standards, uh, that they invest time and some money to build and develop business, and they give their own creative approach to education. And of course, motivation is already a big step to success, but, and we will help and support our partners in any step. So uh, we consider that education can be the business, and uh, it's the best time to enter business of educational robotics. Uh, now I would like to show you a few pages of our website to let you um, find something interesting. So on uh, robot.world website, you can go to materials section. I sent this link uh, to the chat. And you can find our pedagogical guide. It's free. We have uh, 37 uh, lessons. And we have now three languages. It's English, Finnish, and Russian. And also, here you can find our um, academic research. It's the design-based research project, which was done by Innocas uh, project in Finland. So this is innovative network of uh, teachers. And they take a focus group of 174 pupils, aged from 19 to 16, and nine teachers. Uh, uh, they work more than uh, one and a half year on building this uh, research. And after this research, uh, this is published uh, on our website, uh, uh, was born our robot teaching guide. So this teaching guide is the best uh, approach of Finnish education. Uh, and uh, it is uh, very popular in uh, different countries. For example, now we have a very uh, strong demand from Asia uh, to uh, our technologies. Also, I suggest you to visit our apps section. And here you can download uh, our um, build of Scratch for Windows, for Mac OS, for different uh, kind of Linux. And also you can make a uh, Google search of Robo Scratch uh, in the um, uh, Google uh, Play market. And uh, we have Android version of Robo Scratch. And uh, this new year, we also released the um, Robo Junior solution based on uh, Scratch Junior. And we also have version for Windows, Mac OS, for Linux, and for Android. So uh, this is a very short introduction of uh, uh, our um, solution, and I would like to have a section of uh, questions and answers. And I leave uh, a lot of uh, time to this, so please ask your questions. Hello. <laughs> Hello, uh, Frollo. Well, uh, I want to welcome here to this group, and I'm very happy to hear all about your work because I think most of all uh, are looking the same objective in our in our in our countries. Um, I have a team in Mexico, and um, I think we are in the same. Uh, work like you trying to find new things uh, and robotics is um i i don't want to be uh, to know because it's uh, the mode no it's not the mode only it's uh, what's in the way to be uh, to have prospects and to have more uh, students doing things with this imagination and um uh I, I took all about uh, your your you are doing. I, I I heard, but what was your first challenge when you start? 
what was your yeah. first challenge? So our uh, first and largest challenge still uh, is teaching problem. So they see a lot of teachers uh, who is afraid of new technology. They are not familiar with the computers. They are not familiar with robotics. And uh, it's very hard to motivate them to not afraid. And they uh, need not afraid. They need to laugh. They need to love coding. They need to love robotics. They need to love 3D printing and so on. And this is the largest challenge for us, how to uh, enable teachers to love this technology and how to make uh, this uh, um, come true to every schools of the world. And uh, as I said, we have a free and open source project. And we are expecting that teachers and kids uh, will um, reproduce our solution by themselves. So we have a competition in Russia which uh, invite kids to um, make robots. So they, we believe that we can stop education when kid is able to go to the shop to buy components to make and sell their own boards, then to make 3D printed and laser cutted design part and mechanical part to combine and assemble everything together to program it and give back to the teacher their own mobile robot, their own digital laboratory, their own control panel of smart house, their own uh, control uh, um, controller of Internet of Things, and their own 3D printer and their own CNC machine. But we have almost no one to talk about this in the world, in the teaching um, world. <laughs> uh, I think uh, th this is the real, uh, for us uh, in Mexico, uh, the, the challenge sometimes is the, the teachers. And, and sometimes is the schools, uh, when, when we, you go to the schools uh, to invite them to to this this new 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 style of or, or, or learning, but uh, most of the schools think there's only for competition. Yeah, and it's in, and, they, and it, well, but we were we didn't have money to compete uh, to competitions. But it's not only that. And uh, how you can change that that mind? And the robotics it's not only for competition. Um, uh, our main message uh, is focusing to parents, even not to the teachers, but to the parents. And they say to parents, please look uh, outside. Uh, you see uh, that robots is taking job from the people. There are uh, some jobs that uh, uh, already this time uh, totally terminated. For mm -hmm. example, hand washing of dress, now a robot is washing the dress uh, and it's uh, clothes dryer, yes? So now there is no accountant who gives salary to the people, but ATM machines is giving salary to the people and there is no any, any more job of accountants who give salary to the people. And the next profession which will be terminated is driver. Self-driving cars, um, coming in the world and this process will be speed up very fast and very fast we will see that people don't have job and all job uh, have robots yes. and then we will have uh, maybe we'll have uh, communism with guarantee income and so on and maybe we will have uh, ugly capitalism when uh, robots will be owned by a uh, few people and uh, other people will have problem with the life uh, but uh, in any case, the people who have job in robotics, who can operate robot, who can program robot, who can repair robot, or who can who can make their own robot, they will have good job and good future in any case. So if parents are thinking about good job, they should teach kids robotics. And it's not about competition. It's about industry, it's about manufacturing, it's about service robotics and so on. So this is our message. Competition for life. Yeah, yeah, it's competition <laughs> in life, not in game. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> thanks.
may I ask? I have a question, Claude. Um, in, in some parts, it's very similar to um, MBOT and XT. I, I'm uh, looking in uh, the teaching material in English. So, mm -hmm. uh, uh, um, I'm wondering why continue to, to build new products and not using product already existing and do the franchise. I mean, it's very interesting what do you uh, do about um, teacher formation, teacher uh, support. Th this is very, very important. This is the point, uh, I think, more important. But uh, why to create uh, hardware, more hardware? I mean, uh, um, is aesthetically very, very um, nice. Your product is, uh, is super. Mm -hmm. And also, I, I'm looking, in, I'm watching the, the website. It's very interesting. And uh, uh, but I wonder why uh, we continue to build new products, you know, uh, and not to focus about uh, more su about support or uh, um, something um, less hardware. Um, I don't. Uh, yeah, Thank you for that question. Uh, the answer is that when we start our projects, uh, it was about uh, five years ago. Okay. Uh, so when we start our project five okay. years ago, there is no free and open source uh, robotics on the market. Okay. Our project was the first. <laughs> okay. So this is why Google was support uh, okay. us. Okay. Uh, after that, uh, some good. Uh, uh, projects also was born, but um, if we talk about, for example, Lego NXT, uh, th which is kind of market leader in this education uh, section, they are proprietary. Yeah. So they don't let kids to understand what's inside their microcontroller. They don't let yeah. the kids to understand what's inside this sensor, and it's forbidden to replay reproduce. Lego NXT, but it's allowed. We have free license. Everybody can make their own copy of Robo, like everybody can make their own copy of Arduino. And uh, for three or four years, we was the only solution on the market uh, with these um, features. Now there are some Chinese projects which also open source. Yeah, Mbot. Like Mbot, Mbot, like this. Yeah. And but I know, but uh, sometimes it, does, it, it doesn't work uh, very well. I mean, there is some problem in the hardware uh, quality. I th I think mm -hmm. uh, uh, in, uh, so. Maybe this is a point, uh, the good point for your um, product. And uh, but in, in any case, your, um, so I I think it is uh, always too much defined uh, the robot. Uh, could you could you someone um, create something less defined for youngest? I mean, a micro a microcontrol or a, is a, something that they can't understand. They can't understand how electronics works, how circuits works. No, so uh, the, there is a other project they started to try to to explain, but it's not enough at the moment. We, we need some project they can explain now. Uh, 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 SAPU uh, circuit works because you have the you have the um, the, car, the, the, the your uh, robot, no? The mm -hmm. sensor, uh, but they don't really understand what it means a sensor. There is something more they ne we need as a teacher, uh, right? Which age group you are talking now? Until 12. Until 12. Until 12. Okay. Yeah, so we if start. You ask, if you ask, if you ask a, a guy um, of 10 how uh, ultrasonic sensor work, he could. Uh, you could explain something, but not really what, mm -hmm. how it works. Opening, opening the sensor. 
Yeah. Maybe bigger. No, maybe bigger because you need. I don't know. Okay. But, uh, thank you. If you're talking about H and the twelve, the first thing that we are focusing is to compete the Minecraft and other online games. Because after 12, we have a very big program, problem with kids uh, who are playing Minecraft and other things, and they are not motivated to study anything. <laughs> they just want to have the yes. smartphone and tablet and play this. So uh, this is why we start to teach kids as early as possible. So now we, in Russia, we invite kids from five years old to our robot clubs, and we work with some kindergartens and uh, our first curriculum is based on playing. So we let kids to play, uh, to make their own computer games uh, on Scratch, to make their own uh, robot theater, and to make their plays with uh, robots, with some um, uh, arts. And uh, we uh, use uh, st STEM. Uh, we use uh, STEM robotics and we use STEM robotics art. And if we put everything together, the got robust stream. So science, technology, engineering, uh, uh, science, technology, robotics, engineering, art, and math. So um, we uh, uh, drive kids from uh, simple things like playing something to more and more difficult things. And in Russia, in the age of 10, we let kids to do their own robots in do-it-yourself way. So we have do-it-yourself kit, which allow you to um, uh, build your own robot and program it um, um, uh, and use it um, as they own um, uh, property. So kids uh, can make the uh, robot and they can take it home and then show to the fellows. Uh, I will try to show you the picture of this robot, but my internet connection is not very good, so it's not opening still, but when Ah, so now it opened. I will show my screen and show you the picture. Wait a minute. Uh, uh, this is uh, mm, so this is the robot. Do you see the picture? Yes, we see. Yeah, so uh, let me tell you a few words about this robot. So we give uh, to kids uh, components. Uh, it's Arduino, it's breadboard, it's uh, motor, uh, uh, motors, uh, wheels, and some sensors. And first of all, kids should decide how this uh, robot should look. And then they make 3D model of this robot and then they print this 3D uh, part of robot on 3D printer. After they make um, uh, everything printed, they assemble everything, uh, mount all uh, solution on breadboard, and then they can make program. And they can program this solution by App Inventor, MIT App Inventor, by ArduBlock, by Arduino ID, and this is a very good way to make very deep understanding how technology works. And in our curriculum, we understand that kids are not familiar with this technology. So we think that we can be the first people who tell them about electricity, about electric, electric uh, schemes, microelectronic schemes, how different sensors are work and how they can use this sensor to make some useful uh, job, for example, mo move out from the maze, find uh, the best uh, speed on the line racing, and so on. But uh, the most 
important focus for us is to use creative competition, not sport, robotic sport competition, but creative. How good is your solution? How smart is your solution? How much passion you put to the solution? So this is the question. Uh, okay. Uh, for example, this um, this robot you 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 show what? Um, how old are the kids who made it? Ten years. Ten years. Ten old. years. And they yeah. are from a private club or from a school. How is? It? Uh, I would like to know how do you? Um, because you have this robo clubs that is a big network. Yeah. yeah. And how and you have some schools involved in these activities as well. So, uh, so these schools that are uh, related to your franchise and your equipment and hardware, mm -hmm. everything are they? Uh, sorry, I don't know if are they private school or public school. How could you talk a little bit? How is it in Russia? I don't know. Okay, so mostly we are in Russia and in Finland. And we have two models. One model is when they um, uh, developing our own uh, robotics uh, robot clubs network, and another way is uh, using existing schools. So if we go to existing schools, uh, we give them hardware, software, teacher training, and curriculum. And uh, if we open our own robot club, we do after school lessons, weekend lessons, and uh, uh, vacation camps. Mostly on summer, but also in autumn, winter, and uh, spring. And we just uh, have uh, very successful sets of uh, robot camps in London, in England, in Great Britain. Uh, so this robot that you see uh, is the graduate project for the robot club. So after first uh, 60 lessons, kids have basic understanding on coding, on uh, microelectronics and schematics, on mobile robotics, on IoT and smart house, on 3D printing and 3D prototyping. And after he has uh, or she has a basic um, skills, uh, we invite to choose um, graduate projects. And this graduate project uh, might be your own computer game, your own robot, and also it might be your own 3D model, which you will 3D print. And I also would like to share with you the picture of our 3D printer. It should appear here, I think. Ah, here it is. Uh, I hope you see this. So this is uh, our own do-it-yourself 3D printer. And you can order this uh, in assembled one and in disassembled way. So you can assemble this 3D printer with your students and let them understand very good how the 3D printer technology works. And then you can 3D print the parts of the robot, like robot arm or uh, the whole uh, um, design of the robot, like this one. OK? Uh, OK. And could you please um, tell, tell us uh, how do you work with public schools in Russia? How is the acceptation? Uh, how can you make it work with the curriculum, the basic curriculum? Do you have a basic curriculum uh, in general? Uh, just yeah. to, to have an idea, please. Yeah, so in Russian schools, uh, we built three curriculums. One curriculum is for age group five and six. Other group is the age of uh, seven and 10. And third curriculum is for um, 11 and uh, 14. So uh, each curriculum uh, has uh, uh, 60 lessons for each year. And on first uh, level, we are using the technology. Then we 
uh, go deeper and deeper in technology from year to year. And uh, if we work with public schools, first of all, we invite teachers to a special training program. It, uh, it lasts for one week. So it's uh, offline education, but teachers come to our training center for one week. We show them everything, all technology solutions, and also they are involved in uh, kids' education. On the last day, they should make their own lesson for the kids and make it with real kids in the best way. Or if they don't have kids in this time, they make this lesson for other teachers. So after that, they should uh, pass the exams and they should make a uh, wiki page with their own project. They should make their own Scratch project and their own lessons and uh, so on. And uh, we are using project-based uh, learning. So also they should uh, have passed the exams on project-based uh, learning. After teachers are ready, uh, we ship to the schools uh, hardware they give for free our software and we have uh, the full stack of free open source software build it on uh, linux uh, distribution and we give them software for educational uh, task for engineering and creative um, uh, things like uh, 3d design 2D design, uh, making uh, your own uh, uh, electric schemes and circuits and so on. And uh, we give them also solution for uh, sport programming. And then we give them uh, on-site support. Okay. Uh, okay, and how is it um, how is the acceptance uh, from the schools to your projects and hardware and software and uh, how how can you enter the schools and offer they are open or is it difficult or how challenging is it for you yeah. so because you us, have been there uh, for, for many years already and so, yeah. so for us, it's still very hard to go to the schools, and this is the reason why we do our own network of robot clubs because parents are willing to teach their kids all this technology, but schools are not ready, at least uh, in Russia and uh, in uh, some European countries uh, which is close to Russia. Uh, and um, uh, we only enter uh, the schools kind of innovative schools with innovative uh, principals who um, uh, make teachers uh, to go to this uh, area and uh, first uh, half a year most of teachers are unhappy of on this because they don't like the technology we have only uh, small amount of schools with the very um, very motivated teachers uh, who want to be involved in all new but uh, typical situation that uh, teachers are not happy that uh, principals say to them that they should teach kids uh, robotics and coding and 3d printing and so on Okay, so if I well understood, although they have this on the curriculum, the things happening is not right, the, 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 as good as they propose it is. Am I right? No. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I and think it's similar to the motivation. <laughs> okay, I think it's a general worldwide <laughs> problem. Okay, <laughs> okay. So, people, do you have any other questions? So, let's. I I would like to to open to others to make some more questions before we finish. I just uh, had a oh, wait. please hi. go on. Great. Yes. Hi. I just had a hi. hi. Um, I recognize you can scratch. Um, 
I just had a quick question. Are these available on Chromebooks at all? Um, it didn't look like it. We, we are not tested last version of our software on Chromebooks. So I think it should okay. work. But uh, I cannot guarantee this. OK. I, that's all we have in our schools for the most part right now. And I, I don't see us making a change. So I have to be able to test it out before I could recommend it. Yeah, but if our customers will ask us to make the version for, for Chromebook, we will do that. Great. Thanks. It's not a problem. Yeah. <laughs> OK, do you have some more questions? <laughs> Anders, would you like to ask something? You didn't say no. anything. No. <laughs> yes, please. OK. Yes, uh, maybe I, I stuck with one question, I think. How, how did you found this uh, uh, huge company or what it is? Where did you get the money from the first time? Uh -huh. So first time we get money from Russian government. Oh, so, so, so they found uh, it. Yeah. Yeah. So they give us a kind of uh, grant uh, finance uh, to make this as an in innovation project. And our second uh, uh, donor was Google company because uh, we win, uh, won Google Rice Award. So this Google Rights Award also provides us some money. And uh, in the moment you are uh, financing yourself, yeah, with courses, yes, yeah. okay. Uh, I, I think it's very interesting the the robo uh, rob, robot, what you call that. So uh, I, I saw you had uh, some uh, magnetic uh, sensors. You, you just click them on. Yeah, yeah. So you so need you can, only one second. So you can use uh, a, a couple of sensors if you like, and uh, you can use it without yeah. sensors. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so do, you don't have to have uh, all those uh, wires uh, and. Uh, no, like... no wires. No. Okay. You need only two or three minutes to prepare the large classroom. For example, for thirty robots and thirty computers, you need only three minutes to prepare everything and make exercise. Yes. And uh, uh, how do you commu communicate with the, the robot? Is it a Bluetooth or is it a, a cable? You... you can use both options. You can use Bluetooth and you can use USB cable. And we find that teachers uh, prefer to use USB cable because if you use Bluetooth, you need to charge batteries. And if you ask teacher to charge 30 batteries before each lesson, the teachers say that you should go out with your solution. <laughs> yes, <laughs> yeah, I understand. <laughs> but uh, you can, you can uh, the robot in itself is, uh, you can uh, charge the robot? No, no, we charge battery. So you, we use nine volt battery. Uh, oh. you, you can uh, buy it separately in your nearest electric warehouse. And with charging uh, uh, solution, and uh, you can use it, but, but usually the uh, teachers use it only on kind of uh, competitions and shows and so on. But on the lessons, it's much more easy for them that they not to charge anything, and they can get electric power from the cable from USB. Yes, and you have you have uh, the cable when you are yeah. trying it out. Yeah. And then you can unplug the cable. And, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Okay, I understand. So you can have to send a, a robot to me. <laughs> you can make an order on the website. It's very easy. Yes. But you can uh, ship it to any place of the world. Maybe it's the cost. <laughs> no, yeah, no. Yeah. We have cost, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, uh, have you any problem about uh, communication uh, if you use uh, more, de mm, more than two, three uh, robots uh, um, contemporarily, simultaneously? Yeah, yeah. If you use about uh, 10 robots in one room with Bluetooth, 
Yeah. No, yeah, it's a problem. Some strange. <laughs> yeah, some strange, but okay. Um, and also, in our maker space, we started to use, you mentioned at Minecraft, uh -huh, uh, we, yeah. we started to use my mbot with uh, mind test. Mm -hmm. We are open uh, source uh, model no, in our maker space, so we use mind test combined with mbot, so you can uh, maybe, I don't know, I, I, I think it's possible to do the same uh, with Robo. You, you mentioned. Yeah. 12 uh, the, 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 guy, the children of 12 they are not so much interested but if you work um, with uh, two uh, with these two kind of the right mm -hmm. uh, okay yeah thank you. thank you thank you so uh i'd like to thank you very much Pavel. Yeah. um it was a great presentation. We really appreciate it. And I think you've got many friends here. Uh, so I hope. <laughs> so uh, it, during the session, many of the other peers from our group uh, contact me saying that they could not because they are teaching, they are in working hours. So uh, they are going to, to watch this video later. That's why we are recording. And maybe we you have more contacts or questions later. Okay. Okay. Thank you. I'm open to okay. answer. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you very much. Great event. Bye bye. Thank bye you very bye. much. Bye. Have bye. a nice day, okay. morning, and Thank evening. <laughs> <laughs> bye, Veronica. Anders, please bye, bye. don't bye. don't turn off. Luisa. Bye bye. Ci parliamo dopo. D'accordo?